In this video, I'm going to show you how to place and edit text in Illustrator in order to label features on your map. To start with, I'm going to make a new layer, which I'll call Labels. And then I'm just going to make sure that all the other layers are locked so we don't disrupt them while we're doing this. Now I'm just going to zoom in on these mountains, and we'd like to make some labels for these mountains using the Type tool over here on the left. So I'm going to grab that and then just draw a box where I want that label to be. And I'm just going to go ahead and type Mount Abe. Now if I grab the selection tool, you can see that I can edit this, te uh, this text box. And if <clears throat> I make it so small that, uh, that the whole thing won't fit on one line, it will automatically flow to the next lines. Um, I can also just make it about the right size for that label, which is what I'm going to do. And then you can see up here on, uh, on this toolbar at the top that you can change some of the text style. So for instance, I could change the font um, or the font size right up here. There's also a whole panel devoted to just changing uh, type styles and paragraph styles. And if you go up here to the, the window menu, you can go down to type and character and paragraph for the two panels I'm going to talk about next. I just want to point out that this whole list here is the list of different panels that you can use uh, that can either be docked over here or you know so only layers is open right now. Uh, that's why it has a check next to it and you can see it on the right. But you could open any number of these and over the course of the semester we'll probably be using tools in almost all of these panels. So I'm going to go ahead and get the character panel out and you can see that there are a lot of options for how I can uh, affect the way that this this text looks. I can change the font here. I can change the font style. So we have a few more styles than you're used to seeing probably in Word. Uh, <clears throat> we have the regular, of course. We can italicize it. We, there are two different levels of bold, semi-bold and bold, and that can be really handy when you're trying to establish text hierarchies to make certain things more prominent than others. We can also change size, we can change line spacing, the spacing between different characters, we can change uh, the, whether or not characters are stretched, etc, etc. Lots of different options. I sort of like this font. Uh, it's appropriate uh, for this feature uh, because it's, it's a natural feature. I like that it's italic and so I'll stick with that. So in order to get labels on these other mountains, I think I'm probably just going to select that, come up to copy, and then select paste. You can do the same thing with control C and control V. So I'll do that for the rest of them. And then you can just go ahead and double click in one of those uh in one of those text boxes in order to start editing it. This is Camel's Hump. Okay, so now we have labels for each of those different uh, different mountain features. Let's move that one over a tiny bit. Now let's try making a label for this river. Um, we we could just copy and paste this label and put it over here and call it the Winooski River. But in a lot of maps, you see type that's actually curved in order to fit natural features like rivers, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If we grab the pen tool and just start drawing a curved line that sort of fits nicely against this river that we have. And then it doesn't matter whether or not it has a stroke and fill because that's going to go away. So don't bother changing it if you, if you don't like the way that that looks. Now come over here and grab the type tool again. Notice that as soon as you drag the type cursor over that path that you just made, it changes so that the cursor has this little line running through it. And that means that as soon as you click on that path, it's going to start typing on the path. So now, we, now I can start typing right on the path. If I come grab the selection tool, you see that there are these handles. And with those handles, I can move where the type is with reference to the path. And I still have all the options that I would normally if I come over here to the paragraph panel to justify the text to the right or to the center or to the left. There are also some other options associated with typing on a path. If I go up to the type menu and type on a path and then type on a path options, I'll turn on preview so you can see how these affect it. I can change how the type is aligned to the path, so whether it's ascending or descending or centered 
the a ascending and descending is with reference to the direction of the path, and so while this looks like it's actually descending, um, the the path apparently runs from here to there. Um, we could we could flip the direction of the path if we wanted to, but that's why that seems odd.